First question, what are the three R's of water conservation? Answer, water is a precious natural resource. To conserve water, we should follow the mantra, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce, while brushing teeth or bathing, we should not keep our taps continuously on. Reuse, water used for washing vegetables or rice can be used for gardening. RO waste water can be re reused for washing car, watering plants, floor cleaning, etc. Recycle, dirty water can be recycled after purification. The world's water resources are not infinite. It is frightening to know that people in 2050 will only have 25% of the resources that people in 1950 had, while world population will grow 50% or more in next 50 years. So the only way to support future population is by using our resources more efficiently. Water conservation needs to be a way of life, not just something we think about once in a while. So, we now have before us, what are the three R's of water conservation? Water is an important natural resource. It is not that the water is present in the world in an indefinite quantity. Though there are big oceans or seas or water bodies, but all of the water present in the world cannot be used for human consumption. The amount of water which we use for drinking or for food purposes or other purposes is very limited. So, we have to use the water judiciously. So, to conserve water, we should follow the mantra reduce, reuse and recycle. It often happens that when we use the water for brushing teeth or bathing, we keep the tap on. It wastes a lot of water. We should always think of those persons which are living in remote areas or remote villages which are not having access to the drinking water. The amount of water which is available below underground is decreasing day by day. So next point, reuse. We can use the water which we have used for washing and vegetables we can use the same water for gardening. We often use RO for purifying our water. We must also know that these RO wastewater treatment system results into the wastage of about 75% of the water. Only one fourth of the water is made fit for drinking and three fourths of the water is discarded by the RO system. So, we can use this water for washing our cars, watering plants, or for floor cleaning. We can also recycle the dirty water. If we do not use the water resources in the judicious way, then the coming generations will have to suffer a lot. Next question, the level of air pollution is higher at busy traffic intersections. Why? Answer, a large number of vehicles such as cars, trucks, buses, scooters, etc. etc. stop for a short period when the signal is red at traffic intersection. These vehicles release a large quantity of gases due to burning of petrol and diesel which leads to air pollution. The number of vehicles on the earth are increasing day by day. So naturally the air pollution is increasing. But at busy traffic intersections where we have to stop when there is red light, so the number of vehicles which stop there and they emit lot of smoke and it ultimately increases the level of air pollution at the busy traffic intersections. What do CFCS stand for? Name some devices where CFCS are used. Why CFCS are considered as pollutants? Answer. CFCS stands for chlorofluorocarbons. Chlorofluorocarbons are compounds containing chlorine, fluorine, 
carbon and possibly hydrogen have been used extensively in the industrialized nations in the past decades mainly as propellants in aerosol spray cans as refrigerants as blowing agents and chemical intermediates cfcs are used in devices such as refrigerators air conditioners etc CFCs are considered pollutants because CFCs when released into the air go high into the atmosphere and destroy the useful ozone layer of the atmosphere gradually it happens that as refrigerants and aerosol cans containing CFCs become older and more obsolete people tend to forget about them leaving them ultimately to leak and further contaminate the atmosphere CFCs are more commonly known by the name prions a registered trademark of DuPont they are clear colorless liquids or gases at high concentrations they can cause a number of adverse effects such as central nervous system depression cough difficult breathing confusion etc in the 1970s the scientists realized that the cfc which was being consumed by straying in the environment and eroding the ozone layer that protects us from the ultraviolet rays after this realization in 1987 all the world's nations signed the montreal protocol to end the usage of cfc in the next two decades cfc means chlorofluorocarbons they are compounds they are used in refrigerators or air conditioners but they are today considered as pollutants because these cfcs that is chlorofluorocarbons are destroying the useful ozone layer of the atmosphere slowly and slowly in the 70s when the scientists realized that the cfc is causing erosion of ozone layer so after realizing this fact an international treaty named montreal protocol was signed so that there was so that there is the end of use of chlorofluorocarbons in future so now cfcs has been banned Next question a gas x is present in the stratosphere that prevents ultraviolet radiation of the sun from reaching the earth name the gas so answer is name of the gas is ozone question number 5 combustion of fossil fuels generates a lot of air pollution name two alternative sources of energy which do not cause any pollution answer solar energy and wind energy are two alternative sources of energy which do not cause any pollution question number 6 burning dry leaves causes air pollution what should be done to dispose of the dry leaves answer when we burn dry leaves many harmful gases are released into the atmosphere the right way to dispose of the dry leaves is to convert them into compost next hot water can also be a pollutant explain how answer hot water is usually released by power plants and many industries into the water body or rivers it raises the temperature of the water body which adversely affects the animals and plants living in it question number 8 name any two sources which cause air pollution due to suspended particulate matter answer two sources which cause air pollution due to spm rs under number 1 automobiles which burn diesel and petrol produce spm number 2 industrial activities like manufacturing of steel and mining also produce spm spm are microscopic particles of solid or liquid matter suspended in air they adversely affect human health in many ways including direct inhalation Thanks for watching. If you like our course, please spare some time to give a star rating to our course.